Hello, welcome to one more video, uh, but this is not the last one about sound in the browser using P5.js sound library. So in this video, what I want to demonstrate to you is how to listen to the audio that's playing back and draw something according to how loud that sound is. So we can have a responsive shape on the screen responding to a particular uh, audio. Now, before I do that, I'm going to add a little bonus tip in this video, which is that right, this play button right, plays my sound. So the sound is playing, it has a little, and I start to dance or whatever it is that I always do when this is playing. But notice what happens if I run this sketch and I hit play really quickly. Now, I get this error message, not ready to play file. I, the play button appeared before the sound is actually loaded. Now we know the sound is loaded when I see loaded in the JavaScript console in the browser. This is not something that a user would see. I have the console open for debugging as the sort of developer of this sketch. But what I can do in the code here Come back code, come to me code, here it is. Is this, right, remember, the song is loaded and the loaded function is the callback. And in the callback function, I am logging the loaded, logging loaded to the console. But button is created in setup. There's no reason why I couldn't just take these two lines of code and actually put them in the callback. So the idea here is that I don't want the play button to appear on screen until the sound is actually loaded and ready to be played, but draw can start looping. So we can see that you know, if I were to put just some sort of you know, animation in here, can you see that? You can't see that. The play button doesn't actually appear until the sound is actually loaded. I apologize for the flickering. Let me just take that out. So you can see no play button, play button. And now it guarantees that the sound can play. So a little extra bonus tip here at the beginning of my jazzy tune tutorial about P5.js and sound. OK, but now moving on. Um, I forgot what I was doing in this tutorial. Ah, yes, listening to the audio. Let me pause the music. So there's a lot of different things you can do in terms of sound analysis. The simplest thing is just listening to the volume of a sound. Is the sound loud or not so loud at this particular moment? Another word for volume is amplitude. And this has to do with sound being a waveform. Right? If sound exists as some sort of waveform, the amplitude being the kind of height of that wave, the distance between the top and the bottom of that wave. Um, so what I can do in P5 is actually create, an, I'm going to create a variable called AMP for amplitude. And I could say AMP equals new P5 dot amplitude. Now, this is actually an, now an amplitude object. This kind of, in a way, global in, amplitude object is just going to listen to the volume of kind of all the sound stuff that's happening with this sketch. There is a way, I think, with the P5 sound connect function, not connect like Microsoft connect, connect like the word connect, like my fingers are connected. Um, that particular function allows you to connect different analysis objects to different audio inputs and outputs. So there's a more that you can do that's a bit more sophisticated. But by default, I'm just going to say make an amplitude object. And now if I run this sketch and I play the sound, I can look at that in the console. You can see I have this amplitude object. It has a lot of information associated with it. And I can call the function get level. And we can see I've got this number right now. So the current volume is 0.05. So the volume is going to give you something between a range of 0 and 1. But for the purposes of this video tutorial, I set the maximum volume essentially at 0.3 to lower the volume of the song so that I, the mix is a little bit better than me talking and the sound volume. So in that sense, the maximum value I'm actually going to get in this video tutorial is 0.3, although you might get 1. So you know, the first thing I can obviously do here is perhaps do something like, let me draw a background, and then I want to draw an ellipse in the center of the window. And let me just make it 100 by 100, and I'll set the fill to something. So we can see I have this nice ellipse in the center of the screen, and what I want is for that ellipse to grow and shrink based on the volume. So I could say something like, volume equals amplitude get level. And now I could just put that volume here inside the ellipse function. Do you see that ellipse? Is it there? Oh, look, there it is. 
There it is. There's my tiny little ellipse responding to the volume. It's dancing with me. The problem is, of course, it's such a tiny number. So this is the perfect opportunity for us to use the math function. The math function takes a number with a particular range and maps it to another range. And we know the range of volume is between 0 and 0.3. So I'm going to go here, and I'm going to make a, a variable called diam for diameter is map the volume, which has a range between 0 and 0.3. And I want to map that diameter between 10 and, let's say, a 200. Oh, the camera just went off. How will I dance with no camera? OK, so here we go, right? Oh, and then I want to put diameter in here. So now, there's my circle. Oh, that's just the green. I was like, oh, am I drawing some sort of sound graph over here? That's just a flaw in my green screen. <laughs> OK, now I'm going to hit play. And you can see it being responsive. So, you know, you might start to think to yourself, oh, I need some sort of elaborate beat detection thing. But in a way, there's a lot you can do with just plain old volume. So you can imagine, you know, multiple sounds, multiple volumes, uh, you know, having when the volume reaches a certain threshold, having some burst of particles happen. This is just sort of like hello world listening to the volume. And by the way, I can also do this with mic input. So I could get my voice controlling the size of the circle, and I will definitely do that in a future video. Now, there is more that you can do with analyzing a particular sound, and that's something called uh, a frequency analysis, essentially, and something called FFT, which is a means for taking a particular sound and looking at the amplitudes across different frequencies. So are the high-pitched part of the sounds very high? or the low parts of the sound is very high. So you can get a sense of kind of more about the sound through that, and, and I could have different circles representing different pitches and those pitches amplitudes. And I'll also do that in a future video as well. Okay, thanks for watching this one, and there will be more P5GS sound videos to come someday. They might already be there, because you could be watching this in the future. Goodbye.